Hey, this is Craig Garber from kingofcopy.com. I'm the author of How to Make Maximum Money with Minimum Customers, and this week's Q&A video is up. If you have any questions that you want to send in, send them over to me at uh, kingofcopy.com forward slash ask, and we'll get to them in a future video. So we got a couple of good questions today, a few good questions actually. First question is uh, in June uh, from Edwin Soler. Edwin's been a member of my Maximum Money Club for a really long time. Uh, in June, you sent an email stating you should never offer more than two products because this increases the chances of something being bought and is also easier for customers to choose from. Later, in one of your newsletters, he means my uh, offline newsletter, Seductive Selling, I got a copy of this month's issue here, published in this since April 2006. Anyway, in uh, one of your newsletters, you wrote to never give more than one choice. Which is the correct one? Are they used in different scenarios or approaches? And can they be used differently in different industries? Okay, a little confusion. What he's, let's, let me explain what he's talking about. Usually when you are presenting offers to people, okay, you typically don't want to give them more than two choices. Choice A or choice B, okay? Once in a while, like in some consumer goods, I've successfully presented three choices, but that is more of a situation where if you don't present a low bottle choice, for example, on a supplement, some people aren't going to buy more than one bottle. That's just the way it is. So you've got to give them that and you wanted to show them two choices above that. But generally, like when you're selling professional services or anything else that's a little higher price, you want to present option A or option B. Now, what he was talking about, and he's getting confused about is you don't want to ask people to make more than one decision at a time. Each, each decision they can make can say option A or option B, but you don't want to have to force people to make more than one decision. So let me show you what I mean. Oftentimes, I will see people when they're doing, people send me copy to critique or uh, just copy I come across, and they're so preoccupied with, man, I got five things I got to unload here. Let me start talking about all of them. And this one's got a couple of options, and this one's got a couple of options. It's too much. It's overload. People can't handle it. They think linearly, one decision at a time. Especially, I mean, think about this. Think about how stressful it is when your wife comes over to you, okay? And she says something like, hey, listen, we need to go to pick up the cleaning. I need to go to my mother's house. The baby needs this. You know, I need, to get, I need you to go outside and fix something with the landscaping, whatever. The point is there's a series of things and they become very overwhelming. And this is with your spouse, someone that you care about, and with things that you are personally interested in. Now imagine that same scenario, but it's a salesperson, whether in person, belly to belly, or in print, or in a video, trying to sell you four or five things ahead of time. At that point, you see, with your spouse, you could sit and say, honey, hey, listen, let's take one thing at a time, or listen, whoa, 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 slow down. And you care about these things, so you're willing to work with her. With a salesperson, it's like switch off, disconnected. So it's much easier, have them make the one decision, then go on to a post-purchase upsell or a post-purchase conversation about decision two. Decision two can have two choices as well, then they make that one. Then you can go on to a third conversation and a fourth and as many as you want or as many as you effectively can do. Or you could even make post-purchase sales and conversations after the sale, the next day, follow-up, direct mail. There's a number of different ways to do it. But what, he's, what he got confused with is one decision at a time, but two options. You don't want to throw away, throw, make too many options. It's like, you ever watch that show Gordon Ramsay, Kitchen Nightmares? 100% of the time, the first thing he tells the person is, holy shit, you've got way too many things on the menu. This is overload for the consumer and it's overload for you because you've got to be responsible for preparing 75 meals instead of just 12, okay? So when you narrow things down, people are able to focus. Your customers don't have to strain themselves and kill themselves to work with you, and which is the way you want to sell. You want to sell with as least resistance and as much tranquility and calmness as possible and it's much easier to sell in that particular situation. So good question, Edwin. Uh, this question is from uh, Stephen Shaw. 
Hi, Craig. I've got a hard drive full of good programs I bought. My problem is I love information. Hey, don't we all? Uh, I keep consuming for the creators instead of the other way around. How can I make that mind switch to creator for the consumers? It's like I'm a doggone junkie or something. Steve needs a kick in the ass Shaw. Steve, here's how human nature works. Real simple. When the pain of you consuming information is finally greater than the pain of you not doing anything, then you'll do something. At a certain point of discomfort, that's when you'll do something. It's very rare that people basically say, hey, let me try something. Let me not do this. Usually most people are going to react for pain, especially if you're having a problem. So you're not, you haven't reached rock bottom yet, man. When you hit rock bottom, then you'll be able to do something. Now, those people who just go into things, they tend to be very successful very quick because they have sort of uh, blinders on and they're not letting uh, preconceived notions filter their their biases they're just sort of diving in with optimism and some good skills and good talent and uh, it takes them very far so good luck man i hope you're sick and tired of being sick and tired already uh last one for the day jackie lang thanks for the opportunity before i jump in and give you a little background i'm a real estate investor for 15 years I have several membership sites which offer online training for real estate investors. I have thousands of members. Okay, the economy and government regulation are changing what works best for real estate investors. What worked a few years ago will not work now. There will be huge changes in the next three years because there will be twice as many foreclosures you know, with meltdown. We all know this. The good news is the worse the economy gets, the better the real estate opportunities are because the prices are going lower, buy low, sell high. There you go. My question is, when I'm sending out emails to non-members to encourage them to join my membership site, is it better to avoid any talk about the economy and how they need to make plans now to create their own financial security, or is it better just to focus on what's in it for them if they join and keep a positive tone? I don't want to scare anybody away, but I also need to face the reality that they need to create their own economy. P.S. I can't wait to get your book so I could dive in. Okay, great. Thank you. All right, Jackie, so here's the deal. You really have to figure out why people become members of yours what are they looking for and chances are good it's not one thing chances are good some people do want to create their own economy chances are good some people are afraid of the recession and some chances are good some people just want to explore real estate as a biz op um, so you should probably do one of three things talk about all those things as well as talking about other things that your members have told you are reasons why they initially came to you you should also, as a follow-up, be finding out why people stick around because those are hidden reasons that you're not discussing that obviously a ton of people that belong to your site have these feelings for why they stick around. So this could be another reason that you're not, you need to uncover. My point is, you, it, what you should talk about is what your readers and buyers and consumers want. You shouldn't make that decision. You should find out what they want and talk to them. Now, because they in all likelihood want a bunch of stuff, you could either talk about a bunch of different things, segment your list for specific conversations by surveys or whatever other mechanisms you'd like to do. Um, but chances are good you can't really talk about one thing because people are people. You know, Everybody has different thoughts and feelings and needs and wants and desires and perceptions of each of those things. And so you really want to base your conversations on what those folks are thinking about. Uh, anyway, good question though and continued success to you. Anyway, I uh, hope you guys got a lot out of this week's Q&A. Uh, again, go to kingofcopy.com forward slash ask. Send in your questions for next week's uh, video, and I will talk to you later. If you want to get your hands on my book, go to kingofcopy.com forward slash max. It's currently on sale at a uh, discounted price, even below Amazon, and uh, I think you'll like it. Take care. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next week.